Levitsyn Chayamushka Schneerson was born in Babanovich, near the town of Lubavitch, in Belarus, in 1901. Upon her birth, her grandfather, the fifth Rebbe, chose a name for her. Telegraphing from abroad, if she hasn't been named yet, she should be called Chayamushka. Her childhood was spent at the seat of the Lubavitch movement as the granddaughter and daughter of generations of the revered Rebbe's of Chabad. When leadership of the movement was placed upon her father's shoulders, he became the target of continuous threats by the communist regime. With uncertainty hanging over him, he entrusted his middle daughter with the power to conduct all legal transactions on his behalf. In 1927, when the secret police showed up to arrest her father, she ran to the window and called out to her future husband, Schneerson, guests have arrived, thereby saving him from their clutches and setting in motion a plan to save the movement's priceless manuscripts. When her father's death sentence was commuted to exile, it was Chaya Mushka who accompanied him on the lonely journey. A year later, the young woman who was nurtured on the knees of great Rebbes and Rebbetsons married the person who would become Rebbe himself. The couple settled in Berlin, where they maintained a decidedly non-public life, suiting both of their modest personas. In 1933, they fled to Paris. The Rebbetson would reflect fondly upon this period. When the Nazis were approaching France several years later, they were compelled to flee again. Their journey ended a year and a half later when they reached New York. The Rebbetson, with her husband, had arrived to the side of her esteemed father. As people began to take note of the reserved young man who had been appointed to lead Lubavitch's central organizations, his wife continually tried to conceal her regal bearing. Many a store on Kingston Avenue would receive a phone call for a delivery, only to notice at the end that it was Mrs. Schneerson from President Street. In 1950, her father passed away and the mantle of leadership transferred to her husband. As the Rebbe toiled around the clock, she remained a steadfast pillar of support behind the scenes, but never wavering for a moment. For decades on end, as the world came knocking on his door, demanding more and more of his time and attention, the Rebbetson stood in the wings, supporting, and wherever possible, assisting. When the movement and her husband faced a critical challenge on the nature of a Rebbe, she summed up her own life experience, declaring, the Rebbe and everything he owns belongs to Hasidim. Presented here is the testimony of several of those who knew, or at least observed the Rebbetson up close, collected as part of the My Encounter with the Rebbe project. Because of her modesty, it is difficult to learn about her life. To this day, those who knew her are still wary of breaching her privacy in some way. Many of our interviewees would not share experiences they considered too personal. So discreet was she that for many, it was only when they observed the Rebbe after her passing that they realized what she meant to him. From that day in 1988, on his visits to the resting place of his father-in-law, the Rebbe would often spend a few moments in prayer at her resting place as well. Today, thousands of Jewish women and girls proudly bear her name. The Rebbe and Rebbetson had been a source of blessing for so many, but sadly, they were not to have children of their own. A 
A young boy once visited the Rebbitsons' home and naively asked her, Rebbitson, where are your children? The Rebbitson responded, All Hasidim are the Rebbe's children.